So in this video, we're going to be looking at simplifying our algebraic fractions. This time we're going to do it by factorizing. So sometimes we need to factorize the numerator and or the denominator before we can do any cancelling. So in this first example, we want to simplify this fraction. We've got 7d squared plus 14d all over 21d. Now in order to cancel, everything has to be multiplied by a letter or a number. And in order to figure out whether or not we can do any simplifying, we need to factorize the numerator or the denominator first. Now in this case, the denominator can't be cancelled any further at the moment, so we need to factorize that numerator. So there's a common 7 and a common d to our terms on our numerator, so that means we've got 7d outside of our bracket, and 7d multiplied by d gives us our 7d squared, and that we're going to add on 2 because 7d multiplied by 2 gives us our 14d, and that's all over 21d. So now we can cancel that common d that's on the numerator and the denominator. And then 7 and 21 are both factors of 7, so 7 goes into 7 once, and 7 goes into 21 three times. And we're going to rewrite the expression as d plus 2 all over 3. Now each element of the original expression was a multiple of 7 and of d, so you can see we've divided each element by 7d to get the answer. So we've looked at simplifying our algebraic fractions by taking out a highest common factor. Now, what happens if that expression is in the form of a quadratic? So if there's a quadratic expression on our numerator or denominator, we can recognise that as either being a difference of two squares, so that's when we have two squared terms separated by a subtraction sign. So x squared minus y squared is going to equal x minus y upon x plus y. Or if we have a trinomial where we've got three terms and we can factorise that to x plus a upon x plus b, where a, b is our product as our constant term and the sum of our product factors give us our term, our coefficient of x. So we're going to simplify this fraction. We've got x plus 4 all over x squared plus 10x plus 24. So when we're factorising algebraic fractions, we always have a clue on the numerator or the denominator to help us with our factorising. So because we've got an x plus 4 on the numerator, we're going to use that as help in order to factorise that x squared plus 10x plus 24 on our denominator. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight that denominator because we're going to factorise it. So we're going to write equals and we're going to keep our numerator the same, x plus 4, and then we're going to factorise our denominator and that's going to be x plus 4 upon x plus 6. Because 4 times 6 gives us 24 and 4x plus 6x gives us our 10x. You can see that we have a common bracket of x plus 4 in the numerator and the denominator and so we can cancel that out. And then we're going to rewrite the expression and that's going to equal 1 over x plus 6. Now without factorising first it would have been impossible to simplify that by sight. So when there is a quadratic expression in the numerator and the denominator we need to factorise them both. So in our final example, we want to simplify the fraction 4x squared minus 25 all over 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So you can see we've got a quadratic expression on our numerator and our denominator. So that 4x squared minus 25 is a difference of two squares. So we need to square root both of those terms to find the terms in our brackets. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x and we're going to subtract the square root of 25, which is 5. And our other bracket's going to have the same terms, but separated by an addition sign, because that way we've got minus 5 times 2x gives us minus 10x, and a plus 5 times 2x gives us a plus 10x, which cancel each other out. Then we want to factorise our denominator, the 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. 
Now, as I said previously, when you have already factorised the numerator, you've got a clue. And we've got a minus 5 at the end of our denominator and a minus 3 as our coefficient of x. So that means that the 2x minus 5 bracket is going to be our clue, our common bracket on our denominator. So if we rewrite that 2x minus 5, then we can work out that our other bracket is going to be x plus 1 in order to give us the correct terms in our 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So we've got that common 2x minus 5 bracket, so we can cancel that down. And then we're going to rewrite the expression. And so it equals 2x plus 5 all over x plus 1. And because we've got the divide by line, we don't need to put the brackets around our expressions on our numerator and our denominator.